I remember it like it was yesterday. It was 2012 and I had just had one of the major scares of my drinking where I was in Vegas conducting a business meeting and because of all my drinking I ended up having a pretty nasty fall. I fell and hurt myself and everything like that. And I remember coming back from that meeting and I said, you know what, something's got to change. I've got to start to get sober. So I decided that I'd go see a therapist and chalk out all my bad memories and deal with all this stuff that's plaguing me. And I went to this therapist and she had told me that one of my issues was that I had anxiety. Now up until this point, I always had a feeling in my body, but I never knew what it was. And until the minute that she actually told me, you have anxiety, I never really dealt with it in a way like it was about to happen, right? Because once she labeled the word anxiety, I was off to the races. I walked out of her office quivery and shaky because this thing called anxiety has now become a real big thing in my life. It was like what was this little thing that was kind of off to the side had now become this monster that was overtaking me. Hi there, I'm Marcus and welcome to TalkSober.com. And if you haven't guessed it, today's talk is going to be about anxiety and alcohol. We're going to talk all about alcohol and anxiety, how they go hand in hand, how one works with the other, and how you can finally deal with anxiety in a real world way. Now, this is something that I had to learn with over four years of dealing with this, right? Four years from the time she named it to today. And I dealt with anxiety while I was drinking, while I was not drinking, all the time, right? And all of these therapists and all these books and everything told me different ways to deal with anxiety, but I found something that actually works. And I'm gonna share that with you now. So in this video, I'll go over to the whiteboard since we like to write things down. What we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about number one, alcohol and anxiety. We're gonna talk about can alcohol and does alcohol create anxiety. We're going to talk about anxiety and alcohol abuse, alcohol depression and anxiety, alcohol induced anxiety, and all those things. So let's go ahead and write anxiety. And we'll write it all funny because anxiety. There we go. I'll spell it, right? Okay, so we have anxiety here. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about this. Now, what is anxiety? Anxiety is a feeling of discomfort in your body, like something is going to happen. It's that jittery feeling you get, like right before you're about to give a speech, or right before you're nervous to tell someone something, or that feeling you get after you drank when you wake up and you don't know what you did the night before and you're just quivery and wondering what's going on. Okay, now what happens here is anxiety on its own is a very, very common thing. Lots of people have anxiety. Um, lots of people deal with this. I think they said uh, the biggest fear in the world is the fear of public speaking, which means people fear this anxiety because that's really the only fear. You're anxious about what's going to happen, okay? So anxiety is about future, okay? Anxiety is about future. Anxiety is this is going to happen. I'm going to look like an idiot. People are going to tease me. I'm going to get hurt. People are going to say this about me, okay? So anxiety is all in the future, which means if we're living in the future, we're not living right now. Very important, okay? So we have this anxiety. Now, how does this have to do with drinking? Now, when I was first drinking, when I started drinking heavy, after that period where she said, bam, you have anxiety right? She said, you have anxiety. From that point, I noticed when I took a drink, it was gone, right? I would go into a social situation. I would go somewhere where I'd nervously, or I'd usually be anxious. I would go into a business meeting where I was supposed to talk and act like I knew what I was talking about. And um, usually I'd be anxious, but I knew if I had a few drinks in me, the anxiety just kind of disappeared. It, it went away, right? Now, other effects happen, like I became quite an ass, I uh, became a drunk, and things like this. Now, what happened was, like in the other video, where we are training our brain, right? Our brain is learning. It says, hey, I'm anxiety. I don't like this. I got anxiety. I drink, and the anxiety's gone. This goes to the brain and says, 
ding, 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 we have a solution. We have a solution. So every time you get anxiety, your brain says, bing, 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 here's a solution, go drink, right? And over and over and over again. Now, over time, once you have drink number one, drink number two, drink number three, and over and over again, every time you have this to relieve, I can't spell, anxiety, right? Your brain is learning this. Now, what happens is over time, just like any substance, your body gets immune to it, okay? So your body is now getting immune to the anxiety. That's why you're like, okay, well, at the beginning I had three drinks and I was fine. I talked like a king, everything. But now, you know what? It takes me six or nine or 12 or worse, it stops working. This is the dangerous part because when it stops working, what's happening is all this stuff is building up in your body. All this is building up, right? It's all the counteractive anxiety stuff. It's trying to kill the anxiety. But when it stops working, all you are left with is anxiety and no relief. I remember it was so bad sometimes I couldn't even sit at the, uh, the functions for the school for my kids when they were getting awards. I couldn't even go to that stuff because I was so anxious I couldn't even sit still. There was one time my wife asked me to go for a walk in our neighborhood, which I had walked through for years, right? And she said, go for a walk. I couldn't even make it to the end of our cul-de-sac without collapsing and going back home and being just a complete mess and having to go back to drinking, which wasn't even working. It didn't even work, right? So what's happening here is you now have anxiety and no relief, right? Because this anxiety is building up, you trained it to go down with the drinking, and now you're stuck with just anxiety. So what is the answer here? Well, first of all, what has happened is this whole thing has reversed on you. Okay, instead of anxiety and drinking being the relief and the big cycle, drink, relief, drink, relief, now the, the drinking is actually causing the anxiety because there's no mellow out stuff left in your brain and in your body, right? All the mellow out stuff has been killed and now you're just stuck with anxiety. Believe me, I've been there. It ended me up in a mental ward. It was not fun. So. What's the question here? Well, number one, number one, you have to realize that alcohol, I've got to get on my tippy toes here, causes. So the very thing that you think is helping with, re with your anxiety is actually causing your anxiety, right? Your cure has become your worst nightmare because now it is actually causing the anxiety. And now, because your brain says, yay, I still think alcohol works, right? What's happening is your brain is now producing this anxiety and all you have is anxiety. There is no relief, okay? So this is what's going on here. I want you to realize, can alcohol cause anxiety? Yes. It is actually causing the anxiety by dampening the natural things that go against anxiety, right? The natural things that calm you down are now gone because it says, well, I don't need that anymore because I got this alcohol and it works and it works and it works and it works until it doesn't, okay? So can alcohol cause anxiety? Yes, and chances are it probably is. Now, what is the key? Because when I first had this anxiety, when I first got out of that therapist office all wiggly and crazy, I didn't know what to do. I thought I had to fight, right? We live in this culture that says fight for the stuff you want, fight for the things you need. You gotta get out there, fight, 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 right? So I would sit there and I'd be anxious. And I thought the whole world was watching me, okay? And I was completely anxious and crazy and going nuts, all right? And I thought I had to fight it. So I'd sit there and i fight it, right? But what I realized is what does this come from, okay? I'll tell you a little story. Back when I was trying to first get sober, I had this counselor that I found online and she came to me and she said, Marcus, you are a control freak. And to me, this hit me kind of blindsided because I said, you know, here am I, 
My, my wife's a control freak. Everyone else in my life is a control freak, but not me. I'm Mr. Meek and Mild Passive Guy. I am not a control freak, okay? And so she said this to me and it kind of, you know, it kind of threw me off base because I was like, okay, well, what's the deal? And then I started to learn that the meek and mild stuff that I was pretending was actually part of being a control freak, right? You can control with manipulation, with um, the way that you talk, with persuasiveness. All of these things can be a control freak. You don't have to be the yelling crazy person that I thought a control freak was. So here I am, I think I have to fight. And I realized, and the reason I told you that story, that anxiety is about control, right? You're sitting there, you're nervous. There's 300 people all around you. You think they're all looking at you. You think they all care what you're thinking. You think that they know you have anxiety, but they don't. And you are creating this anxiety and fighting this anxiety as a way to control your situation. Right? Think about this for a minute. Anxiety is about control. This is your way of controlling the situation. Okay, and you think, well, you know, this anxiety, I can't get rid of it. I gotta fight it, and the best way to fight it is drinking. But the drinking is now causing anxiety, okay? And we look at this and we say, well, what's the secret, right? We can't drink anymore because it doesn't work. And even if it is still working, it's gonna end up to where it's actually causing the anxiety. So we try fighting, but we realize that fighting is not working. It just makes it worse, right? How many times have you been in a place, you've been anxious, you try to fight it, and it's this cycle of just, you can't even focus because it's all there and it's all making you jittery and crazy and it's all you could think about. It's like you might as well not even be in the place you're at when you're anxious because you're not really there anyway. Now, there's a secret. There's a secret that I learned in over four years of dealing with this stuff. And the secret, the secret is, it is not real. Plain and simple. Anxiety is not real. It's just something, it's a chemical impulse in your body that tells you something bad is going to happen and you need to be on guard, but it's not real. 99% of our anxiety is social, situational, or chemical, okay? Well, it's all chemical, but social, right? Are we afraid of the social situation? Is someone better than us? Is someone gonna fight with us? Do I have to argue, right? It's like that thing that you get when someone has a different view than you and they wanna yell at you about why your view is wrong and you get all tense and anxious and everything like that. That would be social. Situational, are you anxious about your situation? When I went in rehab uh, for 30 days, I had situational anxiety. I didn't know if these people were gonna kill me. I didn't know if I was gonna have a home when I got out. I didn't know what was going on and I was anxious 24 hours a day for 30 days straight with no relief. Crazy, all right? Or chemical, right? It's all chemical because it's all causing something in your body. Now, one of the things that I struggled with was the fact that lots of my anxiety had no like word type thought to it, right? I, it wasn't like I sat there and I went, that guy's probably going to kick my butt. I'm anxious. No, it was just a feeling, right? There was a feeling and that's it, that's it. It was just a feeling, no thoughts, no words, no nothing. But what I had to realize is that most of the stuff, if not all of it, was not real right? Nothing was going to happen socially, situationally, or chemical. No one thinks about me as much as I do, right? Anxiety comes from control, which is also kind of a form of narcissism. You think that everyone's thinking about you. You think everyone cares about you, but no one gives a rip. The fact of the matter is, is this is something going on inside you, okay? And again, remember, anxiety was about the future. If you have anxiety, you are not fully living in right now, okay? Think about this for a minute. This is why so much literature about drinking has to do with living right now, taking day at a time, take it one minute at a time, because this future thing is where anxiety lives, right? Right now, if I stand here and I say, right now I'm okay, nothing bad's happening, I'm okay, right? Now, 
I could worry about tomorrow and say, well, what if that check doesn't come? Uh, what if that person laughs at me? What if uh, the doctor says I need something? You know, all this stuff. But again, that's future, right? And if you're living in the future, you're not living right now. Anxiety is all in the future. And it's all not real because you don't know what's going to happen in the future. That's why the serenity prayer is so important. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I can't change. What can't you change? Well, I can't really change tomorrow. I mean, there's things I could do to make tomorrow better, but I really can't change it from right now. I can only deal with tomorrow when tomorrow comes, right? And we look at this and we say, give me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change and uh, the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. This is the wisdom knowing the difference. The wisdom knowing the difference is gonna change it and say, well, anxiety is really not real and it's all about things that I can't control. That's why so much literature about drinking is all about giving up, giving up the control, right? Giving up and, and we need to give it up because it's like, okay, well, instead of fighting anxiety, I just give up to it. And I say, well, there it is. Right? Instead of going in like I was in therapy and giving it a name and making it this beast that it's not, I just say, well, there it is. There's his anxiety again. It's probably some chemical thing. He might have had too much sugar. Maybe an extra cup of coffee is not a good idea. Uh, maybe you just get nervous in these certain situations. But the fact of the matter is, is I don't have to fight it anymore because now I realize what it is. And back when I was drinking, I didn't realize what it was. I didn't realize that I drank to get rid of the anxiety, which felt good, but then it started to give me no relief, which made me start to feel like I was going crazy. But all of this could have been adverted had someone said, Marcus, your worst fears, your worst anxieties, all the stuff that you fear right now is not real. It's not real. It's something your mind is making up to scare you. It's something chemical, right? All these things, all of this stuff, 99% of it will never come true, right? The 1% that probably will isn't that bad anyway. A lot of the stuff that we make up in our brain is a lot worse than it is. And once we learn that one, yes, alcohol is causing our anxiety now, we need to learn to stop drinking and we need to train ourselves to be okay with it, right? I sit here, I say, well, you know what? Sometimes I'm anxious, that's okay, it's gonna be okay. Right? And that's one of the things I keep telling myself over and over is that it's going to be okay. You're going to be all right. You don't have to fight anymore. You don't have to fight. No one knows you have anxiety. People came to me after I was drinking. They said, you have anxiety? You have a drinking problem? I never would have known. Right? And they had no idea the inner conflict going on inside my mind and my body. And the fact of the matter is, is it wasn't even real. That's it. It's not real. It's just something fabricated by alcohol, bad thoughts, and bad thought patterns. And what I want to do is I want to teach you how to deal with this. So, takeaways from this video. Yes, alcohol is causing your anxiety. You need to knock it off because it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Two, you don't have to fight anymore. Fighting makes it worse. Fighting makes it worse. Fighting makes it real. Right? Fighting makes it real. It's not real. Number three, realize it's not real. And then come back to center, focus on your breath, focus on where you're at right now, focus on the fact that you can't change most of the stuff you're worried about from right here in this moment. In this moment right here, the best thing you can do is just be. And instead of being involved in your anxiety and, and giving into your anxiety and fighting, why not just watch it, right? Because if I say I am anxious, what does that mean? What is that I am anxious, who's an I? And how do I know I'm anxious, right? The fact of the matter is, is anxiety isn't me. It's something my body does. And my mind follows and goes crazy if I let it. But if I just watch it and say, oh, there it is being anxious again. There's that feeling again. Probably had too much coffee. Probably worried about something he can't change. Probably just getting all that alcohol out of your body or whatever it is, all right? Now I'm in control in a way that I don't even have to control it. I just sit there and I say, you know what? There it is. So what? So you got anxiety, so what? Right, I know there's books, all this stuff on all this anxiety, but so what? It's not real. It's only real if you give it a name and you make it a monster. So, focus on that. Remember it's not real, remember you don't have to fight, and remember, 
alcohol doesn't work anymore. I hope you enjoyed this video about alcohol and anxiety. If you have more questions about it, uh, put your comments below. Uh, this is a topic I'm very passionate about, something I dealt with very, very difficult uh, for many years. So if you have questions about it, put them in the box below. Also, I want you to go to talksober.com slash anxiety. Talksober.com slash anxiety. I'm going to put all my anxiety videos and some PDFs that you can download and print out to help you out when you get anxious. So. Go over there, talksover.com slash anxiety. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Marcus, and I'll see you in the next video.